And what can we expect in season two from the Bomb Squad? Our season one was fun, and uh, you know I think season two we'll, we'll have a new cast of characters and some new trips. Uh, Dave will accompany, accompany us on, and uh, you know it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Obviously, it'll be mostly here in uh, Ithaca instead of Cortland and in the basement. So we have a new basement crew this season. Uh, Kenny's actually still there, but uh, Christian Moorcroft is uh, moving up on Sunday, so he's going to be a part of the basement crew. Uh, Darius is a, a new character. Um, you know, he's moving up to the basement. Uh, he stays here at the school a lot of times, so uh, we'll have some new new people this season. My name is Darius Hulliger. I'm going to play with the Team Bomb Squad with Ryan Ciotoli. Uh, I'm with your fighting right now. i got a fight coming up the 26th of November. Uh, K6, that's going to be a big fight for me, my third fight right there. Looking forward to that win, but that's it for me so far. That's it, it for you. Against, against Wayne Jarvis, too. He's one of the one of the Southpaw fighters, so I know it's going to be a tough fight. So Where's that fight going to be? In uh, Scranton, PA. Scranton, yeah. All right, I'm well, looking forward to that fight. Yeah. All right. So how is it uh, training here at the Bomb Squad? Uh, it's different, man. It's fast-paced, fast-paced learning. I like it a lot, though. I like it. It's good up here. It's real good. What got you into the sport? Uh, Jiu-Jitsu jiu -jitsu got me to the sport. I started doing Jiu-Jitsu last, last year. Just walked, just walked into the gym one day and found it. So, Jiu-Jitsu started me off the course. I'm real serious about this. I, I would like to make this still like a, a way of life. So right now, I put my hard time in, basically. Put my hard work in right now, so hopefully it pay off for me in the end. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would love to make this still a way of life. This is a big, big passion. I love to put my heart in my soul into this. So, yeah, definitely like me to the well, you're in definitely a good place yeah. in training with some high caliber guys here. Yeah, I got some, some real good teammates here. So they they, they get my technique together, being that I got, I got into school with nothing. So they help me out a lot, man. Fast pace is good technique. Got good boxing coaches, good wrestling. So picking up real good. So thank you a lot. Well, good luck with everything. Yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. So you're getting ready for the fight? Yep, getting ready. Get some spar rounds in today and stuff. Been working on technique all week, so Let's see if I can't put it to work. So I just had a fight? Yes. How'd that go? It was better than expected, you know, I, I got caught up in a, a triangle choke in the third round, but I won 13 minutes out of that 15 minute fight and uh, controlled the action, controlled the pace, I just got caught in a bad position and this is probably the result of 35, 40 seconds of punching. But uh, yeah, I wormed my way out of it and got the decision. What do you think about this uh, UFC WEC merger thing? Oh man, I wish it would have happened about a year and a half ago, you know, but uh, I think it's great, you know, uh, hopefully I get a couple more wins and they have me back and uh, that would be awesome, you know, it'd be, it's everybody's dream to fight in the UFC, you know, and I was, I was fortunate enough to be part of the WEC, which is, you know, right there now, so yeah, I just hope, you know, get that call eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Did he bust your orbitals or something or what? Does no, that? dude, it's all superficial. He just hit me. He like basically tenderized me. Like he was hitting me and like repeatedly. so much that it yeah. just bloodshot. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it didn't hurt. Yeah, but it was just sucked. That the ones that sucked was when he kept on coming up with these ones. He would like he was double. Yeah, he was double. punching me and then he was like elbowing me and then he was elbowing me and then he was like back elbowing me and then he was like. Bam! Wham! I'm like, because what, it wasn't principally like time, like it wouldn't hit like this. It would go like this, punch me into this one, and then, you know, so I was like, ugh. He did that about five or six times, and then I finally got out of it. But I was laughing at him, but like, you know, the whole time. Yeah. He was like, not to be a dick, dude, but it was pissing me off when you were like smiling at me when I was punching you. <laughs> yeah. I said, man, I didn't know what to do. You had me in a tight triangle, and, you know? It was my defense, but he punched me in the face. <laughs> Everybody loves Kenny Foster. Everybody loves Kenny Foster. Yeah. Kenny stories. Foster. The Kenny Foster stories. If Legendary. You, when you cut, if you. This dude is, he got the best stories in the world. And he's so like animated when he tells them. It's so awesome. He had me, my stomach was hurt and I almost peed my pants to listen to uh, that one you, <laughs> when the cops were chasing him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I could stop there. I actually I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, you don't remember that one, huh? No, I don't. Right. The guys come up with the damnedest things. <laughs> Anthony, who's your favorite fighter? 
Kenny Foster. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't set up. Tell me about that experience you just had with the fight in Philly. Man, I thought it was, I kind of took it like any other fight. I'm happy about that. Like, I didn't feel like the nerves or butterflies or anything, and it was such a big card. I don't know if that had to do with me coming out afterwards or, you know, what, but uh, felt good. I felt in really good shape, but it wasn't the kind of the kind of fight I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a lot more, like, high energy, a lot more... You know, a lot more action in general is kind of lackluster, but I did go into the fight, you know, busted up a bit, and uh, just really at that, right off the bat, I got my nose busted, and uh, I just knew I had to grind that one out, you know, whatever, whatever the hell I had to do to get into that tournament, you know, win at all costs, so I kind of stuck to my guns and just grinded the fight out there from that point, so. And I understand you're flying to Russia, too. Yeah, it's going to be a crazy week. Um, Pat's uh, fighting, I don't even know what the date is, like December uh, 9th or 10th. Uh, I don't know, you get, you get away from those time zones, so you don't know what uh, date you're actually fighting in. But Pat's going to fight in uh, Moscow, and then uh, we fly out to Canada right after. So it'll be a good week. M1 is huge over there in Russia. It is. We were uh, watching some tape on uh, his opponent. Uh, you know, tall, skinny guy. He's, I think, 6'7", uh, about 215, and, um, you know, good athlete. But we are watching some of the tapes, and there was, like, a crowd of 20,000, 30,000 there. So it's kind of crazy. It's, uh, it's like the UFC over there. So we'll enjoy it, and, I, you know, they'll put on a good show and make a spectacle of it. I got an email last night saying, you know, something about what type of entrance music we want, and um, that they also provide us with ninjas if we want for a walkout. <laughs> so we're gonna go with the ninjas. I'm pretty pumped about that. I've never heard of anyone walking out with ninjas before. It's gonna be pretty cool, I think. Like, what does that even mean? I don't know. I guess like when I walk out, they're gonna have like ninjas escort me out there. So I think that's pretty ridiculously funny. Pretty cool. But uh, yeah. I see a Mayhem Miller type walkout for you there, huh? We're gonna go with some house music, I believe. House music and ninjas. Might like to do some some backflips. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. We'll see what the uh, we'll see what it holds. Something to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Tell me about the new uh, the new facility here. What it's like being in this uh, this place. Um, the place is great. We're building additional things and getting some things in every week. Something new gets added over there. We had a chance to see the pull-up bars, kettlebells, the um, uppercut bags are going to get hung up. The speed bags were hung up last week, so every week it's just getting better and better. Fantastic. And it turns out it's like an awesome playroom for your kids. <laughs> for them. Not so much for me, as you can see. But it works for the other kids that come to visit too. Solomon and his brother and sister take class here. Well, so he hangs my out. Sister Your sister sometimes, yeah. So it's a kid-friendly place for sure. <laughs> okay. Is this your wall of uh, fame, so to speak? Well, I guess so. You can say that. You know, I'm not really into. Doing all this stuff, they asked me to put it up, so I, I, I guess it's kind of good for the, for people to see that I do know a little something about boxing. One of my first fights with Mr. Patterson, me and him in the corner. This guy, that was a good, it's a good fight for me. Coming from a gym with all pros, and then uh, it's, it was easy, it was just easy to fight. <laughs> Good memory, you know? A remembrance of Mr. Patterson. Good man. Mrs. Patterson here. Joe Frazier, who I met a few times, several times. And Joe Frazier and Mrs. Patterson here. It was at a benefit for prostate cancer uh, a year after Mr. Patterson died. So, myself and Tracy over there, we were roommates as kids. Who's that? Tracy Patterson. Boys, Dr. Sun, uh, we were roommates as kids. Uh, it was at a benefit from Mr. Patterson, prostate cancer. Wow. 
crafty guy. Yep. One of the best, Floyd Patterson, huh? Oh yes, best man, good man, good man. Did a lot for a lot of people, including myself. I was blessed to, to be able to be in his presence and just be with him. I'll never forget, never forget what he did for me. Mm -hmm.